Good day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you an urgent message. And this message is going to focus on the main reasons why people are taking the vaccine. In looking at the reasons, I break it down into a simple math. F plus U plus L plus L leads to V. V meaning vaccine. And let's find out what my equation is talking about. F, the main reason, is fear. No matter which way they slice it, it always comes back to fear. Fear of your own, fear someone else gave you, fear you have adopted, all types of different fear. But it always leads back to a decision made based on fear. But we did not get fear on our own. We learned it or it was given to us over time. And the reason why I can say that is, let's look at 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For the Most High has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, meaning a mind to think. But we have given up that sound mind, and that's demonstrated in Hebrews 2 verse 15. And the most die is going to have to come back and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So that's the fear that we have taken on, mainly the fear of death. And throughout our entire lifetime, we're held in bondage because we took on that fear. But it was not given to us by the most high. What was given to us? The power to think and to create, and all of this is based on love and the sound mind creating positive things. That's what our sound mind gives us to create these things. But we moved away from that and we're taking on fear, especially the fear of death, and it leads us into making unsound decisions. Let's talk about you. You is unbelief in the ways of the Most High. Did not give us fear. We took that on, that, so that's not his way. But there are other ways that we have taken on, which goes outside of the way of the Most High. Let's talk about it in Job 21, verse 14. They say unto the Most High, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy way. We don't want the knowledge that's given to us by others now that goes against what mainstream is saying. And what's the most I way? Ezekiel 47, verse 12. It's talking about the trees, the vegetables, the fruits that's given to us. It's all around us. The natural ones, not the man-made ones, the ones without seeds, but the natural ones. They shall grow all trees for meat. That's what the trees are. And the fruits of the trees shall be for meat. And if you look down below, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So the natural trees given to us by the most eyes shall be our medicine. Nowhere in this it says vaccine is your medicine. The leaf of these trees shall be your medicine. We've moved away again from that way of the most eye that we should medicate our body with natural leaves from trees that the most I have given us. We got to go back to the herbs in order to cure ourselves of any virus, infection, disease, or whatever man try to create. This is the instruction given to us by the Most High, Ezekiel 47, 12. It's also in Revelation 22, verse 2, that the trees shall be for the healing of the nation. But we have moved away from that. And what I'm going to present to you now is the information that will move you back to that. The herbs are for the healing of the nation. In order to find this out, we'll go to Apocalypse of Elijah Chapter 1, verse 15, and all the way to verse 22. And this talks about the benefit of the fast. And just a quick summary of a fast. A fast is not starving yourself. That's a misconception and a deception. A fast is following the instructions given to us 
by the Most High of the food that we should put into our body. And those instructions were given to us. I'm just going to bring it back to you as a reminder. Let's read from this. Remember that from the time when the Most High created the heavens, the Lord created the fast. What part of the Bible talks about the creation of the heavens? Genesis 1. That means somewhere in Genesis 1, this instruction of a pure fast was given because when the heavens was created, the fast was created as well. And it was created for the benefit to men and women on account of the passions and desire which fights against you. So you're going to have passions and the desires that are put in you either externally and it becomes yours internally that you're going to want to do certain things and eat certain foods. And it's going to fight against you so that evil will not inflame you. That's what the fast does. It will make sure that the evils that are around you does not inflame you. This is what it does. But it is a pure fast, which I have created, meaning it's pure. It's going to prevent the evil from inflaming you if you follow the instructions that were given as to the fast when the creation of the heaven was done. Let's read on some more. The Lord said, the one who fasts continually will not sin. And what is sin? Sin means you are not following the laws of the Most High, the instructions of the Most High. That is sin. You're not following the instructions given. And we're going to go to this instruction that was given to us. That is sin. You're in, you're in imbalance with the laws of God. That is what sin is. You can continue reading the rest of it from 18 all the way down to 19, but I'll jump you to 20. But a pure fast is what I created with a pure heart and a pure hand. Everything about this fast is pure. It keeps you pure. What is pure? Meaning you won't bring in any imperfection, any virus, any disease, those are imperfection. The Most High does not create imperfection. The Most High and the Lord creates pureness, pure of heart. Heart meanings the mind, what you're thinking, and pure hands. That's what it was created for and with. It releases sins. That's what the pure fast does. It already mentioned above that you will not sin if you're on this pure fast. It heal diseases. That's the part I want to draw to your attention. It heal diseases which causes viruses. So it heals all of that. This is what that pure fast does. We got to go back to the pure fast. It cast out demons demons which are associated with these viruses that are being circulated. All they are are demonic energy that's being poured upon the people that are not following the instructions given by the Most High. Continually pure fast. Let's go to 22. It is effective upon the throne of the Most High for an ointment and for a release from sin by means of pure prayer. So again, it keeps coming back. The pure fast will release you from sin. It will not let you sin, and it releases any ailment, any disease, any virus, and it casts out demon. What is this pure fast? If I'm telling you it's not starving yourself and drinking water, what is it? Let's go to what the pure fast actually is. This is the pure fast that was created at the time of all creation, Genesis 1, verse 29. That's where the Most High gave us the instructions. It didn't say man say or somebody said on behalf of the Most High. Genesis 1, verse 29 starts out by saying, the Most High said... 
word of the Most High, directly from the Most High. What did the Most High say? Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, natural trees, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. So the fruit tree has to have seeds. It has to come from a natural seed and the fruit itself has to have a seed. To you, it shall be for meat. That's the instructions given as the pure fast that will relieve every disease, every virus, every sin, and every demonic force that is placed upon you because we have to follow what the Most I said. Genesis 1 verse 29 clearly shows what the Most I has said. I have given you every herb bearing seed and I've given you every tree, natural tree. These are natural things, not the man-made one, because man has hijacked this verse and created his own fruits, seedless fruits, his own vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, all these man-made vegetables trying to pull you back into a state of mind that is not pure. But you follow this and you do your own homework, your own research to know what trees, what vegetables are natural versus which are unnatural and what fruits are natural versus which one are unnatural. Do some homework and you'll find out which are natural, which aren't. It's coded on the fruits and vegetables that you eat. There are barcode numbers that are on them. Some start with nine, which shows you that they're organic, five digits. And if it starts with nine, it tells you it's organic. Another five digit code, if it starts with eight, that means it's GMO. It's in the numbers. If it's a four digit code, it means they tell you it's conventionally grown, but what is convention? Convention is not what the Most High has told us here in Genesis 1 verse 29. Convention meaning they use pesticides and chemicals, but they didn't use a GMO seed to plant that particular vegetable or fruits, but it has been sprayed with pesticide and chemicals. So what I'm telling you, if you want to eat as close as possible to Genesis 1 verse 29, look on the barcode of that particular fruit and vegetable. Should start with a nine and there should be five digits on the barcode. If it has five and it starts with an eight, the first number, you don't want it. That is a genetically modified fruit. If it has four code numbers, whether it starts with a three or a four or a five, it has pesticides and chemical on it. And what I want to bring back to your attention, it says it shall be for meat. Meaning if you're eating meat right now, you're falling outside of the instructions because it's telling you what should be your meat. Herb with bearing of seed, I mean, it has a seed, you can regrow it, and every natural tree and a fruit with a seed. That's your meat, not the literal meat that you are given from chicken, cow, goat, lamb, fish, lobster, shrimp, crab, and any other food which we're calling our modern day meats that we're eating that is of the flesh. That's not the meat that's being talked about here in Genesis 1 verse 29 when the heavens were created. 
the Most High gave you the pure fast that were given to you at the same time. And these are words coming from the Most High. The Most High said, these are the things that you should do. Genesis 1 verse 29, your pure fast. I'm bringing you back to the instructions of the Most High that you need to follow so you can relieve yourself of all sins and heal every and all disease and virus and cast out the demonic forces that are telling you you need to eat meat, starch, dairy, sugar, which is what giving you the disease and making your body prone, susceptible, willing to take on virus. This information that I'm bringing to you, it's available in the Pseudepigrapha Bible. That's the Bible that has all the missing books of the original conventional Bible that we currently use in our modern day time. But this Pseudepigrapha Bible, it's available now for us to get additional information that's why I'm bringing this to you. This is in the conventional Bible, our modern day Bible, Genesis 1 verse 29 is there. But my question is, why isn't anyone in our religious body of people that has been telling us all these things over the years, telling us this? Why isn't our pastor telling us this? Why isn't the church telling us this? Why isn't all the people in our Christian belief telling us this? Why isn't the religious lawmakers telling us these things? Why isn't the church that's over all other church in our modern day time, and we all know who that church is, telling us this, that the most I said, every herb, and the herbs that are bearing seeds and every trees, natural trees and fruits that have seed shall be your meat. No one is telling you that. And also they're definitely not telling you that this instruction, trees, herbs, seeded fruits, the natural ones, not the man-made ones, heal all disease and keep you away from sin and the demonic forces that keep you in sin and in disease and viruses. They're not telling you. And I say unto them, shame on you if you're not guiding the most eyes people in the right direction according to the word of the most eye. Most eyes said these things and these are the things you need to be telling most eyes, children, we're all as children, and we need the word of the most eye as given to us by the most eye to be told to us by the supposedly shepherds of the children of the most eye. And again, I say unto the shepherds, the false one I'll add, if you're not telling the most eyes, children, these things at this particular point in time, shame on you. More instructions given to us where we're moving away from things that the Most High has presented to us. Let's look at 2 Ezra chapter 7. We'll read from verse 23, 21, 22, you can read on your own. They even declare that the Most High does not exist and they ignored his way, his laws, his statutes, his instructions. We're ignoring it right now, and we're attaching ourselves to man's. You have to take this, you have to take this, you have to take the medicine, you have to take this. We're, we're told our medicine is the leaves. That shall be our medicine. Always remember Ezekiel 47, 12. Let's look at 2 Ezra 15, verse 3. Do not fear the plots against you and do not be troubled by the unbelief of those who oppose you. That's why I'm saying things I can say now because I don't fear any plot that whomever is trying to do to get you to vaccinate yourself 
and go against the ways of the Most High, and I'm not troubled by those who do not believe me. I leave them alone. I just give you the information. You have to dissect it on your own. And I'm going to jump you back to 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 24. They scorned the Most High's laws, his 12 laws and two statutes, denied the agreement that he has made with us, the children of Israel. We have denied that agreement that he has made, and they have been unfaithful to his statute. They don't believe the word that he's saying, and they have not performed his ways. Prophecy already knew that we we're going to do these things, but now I'm trying to alert you to those decisions before you make wrong decisions and cannot redeem yourself out of your errors that you have made. L, the first L is for a lack of knowledge. You don't have the knowledge and you're not seeking the knowledge and therefore without proper knowledge, you're going to make the wrong decisions. That's pointed out to us in Hosea 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge I also reject them. You don't move towards the knowledge that the Most High has given you, so he's going to move away from you. How much more can he push it on you before you say, hey, listen, I need to go find out what am I being told to inject in my body once it gets into my body, and if it's not compatible with me, how can I get it out? Can I get it out? You cannot. So, you got to get the knowledge first before you make decisions. You can't make decisions based on fear. It will clog your decision and you'll always make a bad decision based on fear and misinformation. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, lack of knowledge. That's always going to get you into trouble. You have to seek knowledge about whatever it is you have to make important decisions on and not do it based on fear, but based on your own research. And if you can find the research, go within and seek that message, that intuitive message from the Most High, because that's your connection to the Most High, your intuition. The last L is for lies. Lots of lies being told. It's coming from all different sources. You have to know that you're being lied to. No one is going to tell you the truth unless you seek that truth yourself. And you've been warned about those lies. And I'm here to now point it out to you. Revelation 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. Earth is always America. So the American leadership, those who are behind it, which is the Christian church, will help to deceive them that dwell in America by means of laws and science not understood. That's miracle. That's the miracle drug that you're getting now. It's not a medicine. It's just laws and science, natural laws and science that's not understood by you, that's being used against you. That's what's that telling you. And we'll talk about 2 Ezra 11, verse 40. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts. When you see beasts, it's a nation. And the reason why I'm pointing this out to you, I'm trying to tell you who's now running your nation, because someone is going to run your nation behind the scenes. So the Roman Republic, the Catholic Church, came forth and overcame all other nations and had the power over the world with great fearfulness. That's where your fear is coming from. The Christianity creates your fear. And that fear is going to encompass the entire America with much wickedness and oppression. It's telling you this. And so a long time dwelt this control over America with lies and dishonesty. That's where deceit comes in. So I'm telling you, you're being lied to. There's someone who has set up this structure of lies to keep you in fearfulness 
so you can make bad decisions. Let's read 2 Ezra 11, verse 41. For the America has the Roman Catholic leadership that's in America in secret has not judged with truth. They have not governed. They have not ruled with truth. They have ruled with lies. So at this point in time, you're not going to get truth. You have been getting lies and there's no point in time in which you're going to get truth until you start cleaving, you start holding on to the message of the Most High that he has put in scriptures and that a lot of his messengers now who are being raised up is here to tell you. So the last one is lies, lies, lies that's being told to you. Now here's my message to you. Do not allow yourself to be a victim of fear, unbelief, lack of knowledge, lies that will lead you into taking a vaccine you know nothing about. You have to equip yourself with the knowledge of yourself, the knowledge of the Most High, and the knowledge of what decision the Most High want you to make at this time, not what man wants you to make. You have to decide, but make sure you equip yourself with the right knowledge before you make choices. There are five things that you must know to figure out why things are happening now, all the things that are going on around you, all the chaos, all the rush for people to make decisions without choices. These are the things. The time when the foolish speak and the wise stay quiet has ended there's a spiritual energy that was released in 2017. And the more people that can be pushed into making bad choices, then that spiritual energy won't reach them. That's why the sudden rush to get people to make choices before they start coming into this energy that is coming to them. The second one, the time when the ungodly and the wicked and the weak rule over the righteous and the strong. That also has ended in 2017 when that spiritual energy was released. They're not going to rule anymore and they're trying to hold on to that rule. The righteous, meaning the people who want to do things rightly, the way the most I want them to do it, the real strong people, they're coming into existence now and the wicked, the ungodly, the heathens don't want that to happen. They want to hold on to that power. That's not going to happen as well. The time when lies become truth and truth became lie has also ended. We're moving back into truth and knowledge. It's running in abundance now. Many people are getting intuitive truth and that cannot be stopped with the spirit being released in 2017, the time when Esau, Gentile, Japhet, Eve, I'm talking about the same race of people that are currently ruling the earth, their time to afflict Jacob, Israel, Shem, Adam has ended in 2013. Looking from it from a spiritual standpoint, 2019, if you're looking at it from a physical standpoint, but the ruling class now, which are of Caucasian complexion, they're ruling the folks who are of dark skin complexion. That is over as of 2013. The ruling class, the Caucasians are on borrowed time at this point. And that time is gradually withering away. But that ended in 2013, 2019. If you're looking at it from a physical standpoint, that's why in 2020, all hell broke loose. Which brings me to the fifth and final one. This is most important for those who are now in America. The time of that nation of the eagles will I judge has started in 2013. If you're looking at it from a spiritual, a biblical standpoint, 2019, if you're looking at it from a physical standpoint, that nation will I judge. That nation is going through its judgment now. 
and part of its judgment, it wants to bring in as much people to perish with it by giving them bad choices, bad medication that will prevent them from moving into that spiritual kingdom, that spiritual emanation that's coming towards them. So if you set up that cause of fear, unbelief, lack of knowledge, and letting lies make you make your decision of taking a vaccine, you're going to have to deal with the effects of it. Every cause you set up, there's an effect. You cannot have one without the other. No one gets out of that divine law. Here is the effects that I want to point out to you that you're going to have to deal with. Revelation 16, verse 2. And the first angel went out and poured out his vial upon America, earth. And there fell noisome, meaning harmful and noxious, and grievous, meaning severe and painful sores, mental unbalance, upon the men, men and women, which add the mark, the vaccine, the attachment of the beast, the beast's Eve, Gentile, Esau, serpent, the eagle, the dragon, the Vatican, upon them which worship the image, which is the white Jesus. So all those who believe in Christianity of the Roman Catholic, of the Catholic belief, whether you think you're not part of it, you are, or the origination, especially of the English Christianity, originated from the Roman Catholic Christian religion. So these are the things that's going to come upon you. These are the effects that's going to have to be dealt with. Noisome and grievous sores upon those who attach themselves to that system or take their vaccine as a means of attaching themselves to, I'll be safe under your system if I take your vaccination. This is what's going to come to you. There's no way around that. If you look at 2 Ezra 15, verse 3, it says again, we're talking about fear. Do not fear the plot against you and do not be troubled by unbelief of those who do not believe you or oppose you. 2 Ezra 15, verse 4, for every unbeliever shall die in his or her unbelief. If you don't believe and you're going to do things out of fear and out of pressure from the fear that's coming from other systems, from other dominant forces within that system, 2 Ezra 15 verse 4 shall certainly come to you. For every unbeliever shall die in his or her unbelief. Let's look at some more. I'm not done with the effects. You're going to have to deal with the effect of the cause you set up. Revelation 20 verse 6. Blessed and the holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. That first resurrection, as I pointed out in 2017, where that spirit start to emanate and those who hold on to that spirit and start to see things differently and make spiritual choices on such the second death has no power. That's why most of us who have harness that energy that's emanating in 2017 and onward, the system has no power over us, cannot influence us to make decisions that we don't want to make. The fear, the unbelief, the lack of knowledge, the lies cannot force us to make decisions. But we shall be the priest of the Most High and of Christ and shall reign with them for the next thousand year of life that's coming to us. And that's what they're trying to prevent you from being part of this thousand years of life. I won't get too much into that, but what I want you to make note of is the second death that's mentioned in Revelation 20, verse 6. That's the piece I want you to note out of that because it's going to be explained to you in Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and all liars 
shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. What's the second death? That's where you are spiritually dead now. If that energy hasn't reached you as of 2017, you were spiritually dead. 2017 was to have you go through the resurrection, getting back your spiritual nature. But if you haven't gotten that, you're now going to go through a second death that is of a physical death and another further spiritual death. The fearful, the unbelieving, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which is the second death. That's the effect that's coming to anyone who allow fear, unbelief, and lies, and lack of knowledge to dictate their decision at this time. This is a critical time. That's why you see all these things are happening around you. Don't be part of that second death. You're already dead now or were dead as part of the first, meaning all the spiritual energy was taken from you by the Roman Catholic Empire through fear and lies. But now this is your chance to break free of that fear, the lies, by getting rid of your unbelief and getting knowledge so you can make right decisions and not be part of that second death. So let's redo the math that you will be a part of if you allow fear, unbelief, lack of knowledge, and lies to lead you to death, which is that death is the second spiritual death, which is also and most inevitably going to be a physical death as well. You don't want to be a part of that. So get rid of your fear. Get rid of your unbelief and start believing in the word of the Most High. Gain knowledge. Get out of your lack of knowledge. And do not allow yourself to be influenced by lies without you checking it out for yourself. Getting the knowledge for yourself. Believing in the word of the Most High that will lead you back to the truth and totally getting rid of fear. The most I did not give you fear. Someone else gave you that. Do not be part of that second death that's everyone now around you want you to be a part of because they don't want you to move into your spiritual power, your spiritual love, and your spiritual sound mind that was given to you by the most I. Now I want you to know you have a choice to make. Whether you're going to use F plus U plus L plus L equal V, or you're going to use tree plus herb equal your medicine, or you're going to lead yourself to F plus U plus L plus L equal your death, D, or you're going to use tree plus herb leads to live you living, hence I have on both corners, evil live, they're both from the same word, it's just turned backwards. Evil is backwards. So do you want to turn backward or do you want to move forward and live? That's the choice that you have to make at this point in time. In order to validate what I'm telling you, I'm going to lead you to Matthew 6 verse 24. You cannot serve God and serve the devil evil at the same time. No man can serve two masters. You cannot. You completely cannot. You're going to hate one, love the other, or love the other, hate one. You cannot do it. Therefore, the instruction is you cannot serve God and serve the devil at the same time. The word to describe the devil and what he represents is mammon, which is the riches, the wealth, the gods of riches. They're the ones who have made deals with the devil to put you in this situation right now where you have to make a choice. You cannot serve both of them at the same time. You're going to have to choose one. Choose who you will serve. 
But if you choose the Most High's way, the Most High's laws that he have given you, tree plus herb equal living, equal life, equal medicine, then you need to be single-minded in your decision. You cannot be double-minded jumping back and forth. You have to make your mind up and follow that straight and narrow path. No one is able to enter the holy places if he or she is double-minded. You cannot go anywhere spiritual with that. The one who is double-minded in his ways and in his prayer, because your prayer, you're praying about the ways and the things that you want. That is darkness. That person is in darkness and is of darkness to his or her self. And the angels, angels of the Most High, do not trust that person, him or her. Therefore, be single-minded in the Lord and the Most High at all times. That's the instructions I want to give to you. When you decide you're going to serve the Most High and the Lord, you have to be single-minded in the Lord's way, in the Most High's way at all times. The Most High and the Lord have given you as the instructions. They have created the fast when the heavens were created. They gave you the fast. You have to go back to this. So the instructions are there. So if you choose live, this means you have to go back to tree plus herb equal your medicine in order to achieve tree plus herb equal live. You have to go back to that in order to live out the benefit of the fast, to release sins, to heal diseases, and viruses that are caused by man. The Most High doesn't create diseases and viruses. And also to cast out the demons that was called into existence by man. And cast out those demonic forces that man has put around himself and around you to hold you in bondage. You have to go back to tree plus herb equal your medicine and make sure that you live. You've made the right choice if you have chosen to serve the Most High. Once you've made your choice to go back to the Word and the instructions of the Most High for food shall be trees, herb, and fruits with seed as your meat, because that's the instructions that were given to the man and the woman that was created in Genesis 1 verse 27. Genesis 1 verse 29, that's the instructions for this person that we're going to be talking about. Genesis 1 verse 27, remember it. The Most High created man and woman in his own image. What's his image? Immortality, eternity, living forever, existing forever. In this image, of the Most High created the Most High, man and woman. Male, which is the willer, the thinker of reality. You think it up, you formulate the thought. And then female, the creator, the generator of that reality that was thought up, willed by the male, the masculine polarity. The female, the feminine polarity, will create those realities, created the Most High, them, man and woman. So in man and woman, he created with the two polarities. A masculine polarity is the willer, the thinker, and a feminine polarity, which is the creator, the generator of that will and that thought that was made up by the masculine polarity. You may hear several other explanations for this, but I guarantee you this is what this verse is telling you. You have that immortality to think and create just as how the Most High does it. But you will do it differently from the way Azazel is doing it for evil. No, you won't do that. You will create and think 
based on love and knowledge and wisdom based on righteous things, not evil. You'll create based on live, moving forward, live, not going backwards, evil. That's not what you will do. To confirm that, we'll go to Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23. This is pulled out of the Pseudepigrapha, the other books of the Bible. That's where it's housed in the Pseudepigrapha. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23. The Most High created man and woman to be immortal. That's why I can break down Genesis 1 verse 27 that way, because I have additional information that was taken away from us, but now it's coming back to us so we can interpret things correctly. So he created you, man and woman, to be immortal. And he made you, man and woman, his chosen people, to be an image, exact likeness, the same, similar to the Most High's own eternity and immortality. He made you just like himself, to be immortal, to think anything, to will anything, and to create anything, and to generate any reality that you want. The only thing that he wants you to do is do it righteously, rightly, good, light, positive, not darkness, not negative, not evil. He wants you to create, to live that immortality. That's what I want you to get from this. And with that said, I want you to be stand strong, be strong, and stay strong. Mm -hmm.